What does your freedom mean? In the Anthropocene. The resistance here is our existence. The minute we are born, we are in the resistance. All these hundreds of years of colonization, in this time of so-called freedom, we inherited so much trauma and grief. We tried to build a revolution and we were not able to be successful because we were not able to really see the inner structure. We may find that the very last thing to collapse is the financial system. And in my mind, this issue still resides as one of the biggest frauds in human history. The way that we recovered from the global financial crisis was essentially to reward the people principally responsible for causing it. I want to reach in, rip out their heart, and eat it before they die. main things that happened after the housing crisis is a lot of people who might have thought that the status quo was going to work out people started to realize that that was not going to happen. Middle class way of life was not going to sustain them and that that was part of a systemic shift that that really global capitalism was not going to function in the best interests of ordinary people. We were here in New York and we were watching the degree to which the, the banks were just engineering the whole thing to make us pay for it and then and then escape into their world. Send shockwaves around the world, even though it just started in one, one country or one part of one country. Uh, one can see that there is a, there's a global connect. Spread a much deeper sense of the fact that something is desperately and fundamentally wrong. Began in Tunisia with a vendor in self-immolation, burning himself jumped into Egypt and all these other countries. An uprising that began in a small town in Tunisia spread to embrace the whole Middle East region. Hey, we're seeing it in Algeria, we're seeing it in, in Sudan, but we've seen it in Tunisia, in, in Egypt, Burkina Faso, Senegal, and so on and so forth. Even though Tunisia might revert back to its dictatorial processes, these things matter. What characterizes each of these movements is they are seeking to give birth to a new world. Movements have now entered a kind of global consciousness. The use of technology created new abilities to create uh, solidarity movements. Tactics and strategies that people are learning from each other around the world. We look at uh, what we promised. We said education will make the world a better place. Educated people are also responsible for where we are today. We said science will make the world a better place. Any scientific mind will say what is happening is wrong. And we said economy will percolate down to poor people. It didn't happen. So many of our promises have gone wrong. And I think out of that is part of how you got to the Occupy movement. A lot of folks started saying, you know, this the dialogue right now is all about the, the budget deficit, but what's really happening in our lives is death. Many movements today are in the same vein. They are not coming to the street to present demands to the government. They don't believe that that will be the solution, but to see themselves and for the society to see how many they are, how courageous they are, how dignified they are. Can you hear the thousand mile melody Coming from a distant way or calling from afar Calling through the ocean channels Saying, saying, can you hear me? Hear me? Can you hear me? Hear me? I think never before in history of humankind have we seen these levels of inequality where, for instance, 50 people own more than 50% of the world's population. We can name things that are real. We can name capitalism. 
We can talk about racial capitalism. We can talk about systems of white supremacy, thanks to the movement for black life. Liberalism has always been an elitist project. It uses violence and other tactics to exclude people. And they exclude them into what I would call the sacrifice zone. This is also leading to war around oil and consumption of oil and who is controlling oil, etc. And others are creating war against those who are who are trying to find a place to live. And speaking, some are speaking with a lot of privilege, like, you know, shit, is today the day I'm going to die? Is today the day that I'm not going to see the next day? If you think we should treat money as a tool, not a god. If you believe that the logic of the future should instead be about you and me and everybody. If you believe the most sacred value should be afforded not to money, but to life, then the chances are you don't agree with capitalism. And my friend, you are not alone. Evidence from around the world suggests that there are now millions, if not billions of us feeling the same way. We can build new systems to replace this dying one. We can reclaim the future. There is no place for optimism, but we can nourish hope. It is really a condition for the survival of the human species. Then we accept that, that the ordinary people, ordinary men and women are leading the path and then we are now activated by them. We've always been bothered by the word activist. Special people over here struggling to end poverty and struggling to stop racism, as opposed to what we're being called to do. Like, what are we doing here? Beyond solution, solutionisms and NGOisms, we need activisms to celebrating demise just celebrating the rituals that might bring us closer. Whether it is from Palestine to Papua New Guinea, to the communities that were ravaged by the civil war in Sri Lanka, to the communities in Uganda who are facing the implications of these false climate solutions. At the end of the day, activists, especially activists that put themselves in the front line, are being murdered whether it's racism or xenophobia or morbid capitalism or destruction of our mother, to me, they stem to a large degree from patriarchy. Seeing that most activism has still been shaped, I think, by a rather male uh, attitude. The feminization of politics, we need to eliminate the principle of domination and control imposed by men. And this represents a very radical change. Women are ready, have been for so long. Women lead all the time. The women-led movements will only continue to grow. Will we understand as a movement that we cannot wait until governments act? but that we have to find decentralization where a certain kind of reconnection to the sacredness of life will and can happen. The roots go right out of my feet, right down into the earth. I know every story for thousands of years about my land. I know the water and when it changes and when it rises. I know what plants and medicines grow on my land. I know how many animals live there because I know that the land I stand on, my grandfathers, 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 have always stood. Of all the genocide that has happened to our people, we are not supposed to be here. But we are tough people. When we faced all together what happened in Standing Rock, how it was starting with a little camp where the indigenous people did hold uh, the fire and the prayer, and then suddenly more and more people came, the veterans came to ask for, for forgiveness. All this we faced worldwide. And I think this gave many people hope. Standing Rock was an incredible, moving, inspiring moment for all of us who were there and all of us who were not there. Standing Rock actually revealed in some ways just how deeply brutal the fossil fuel aspect of global capitalism is. Indigenous people from all over the world are standing in the last of the virgin territory, native grasses, native plants, medicines, animals, water that is left in the world. And we have no other choice but to stand up and defend it with our lives. There is no other choice. We have to stand so the world can live. The Anthropocene is literally the age of man. 
defined by the collapse, defined by loss, mm. defined by ocean acidification, climate change, global warming, the loss of species, and terrible shifts across the planet. The election of Donald Trump has left millions of us in shock. We should remember that he is not an isolated phenomenon. He is a symptom of a sickness that is raging all around the world. A 400-year-old economic system is dying and another struggling to be born. Change on this scale is not going to be easy or smooth. We can despair every time upheaval comes in the form of right-wing extremism, or we can step up. We can take some time to breathe, reflect, even grieve. We should remember our interconnection with all life on this planet. So it's time to come together, because we are the ones we are looking for. We are the ones who can and must grasp the opportunities in these crises. This is not just activism. This is our responsibility as humans, alive, as all of this unfolds. The meaning of the word crisis is actually the point in a disease where a person either dies or is revitalized, finds a new kind of health. And I think that that's the kind of crisis we're in, the sort of turning point. It's like a being that's dying and it's going to flop all over and suffer and gnash teeth and everything because it has to die. And we need to promote the cultural shift. And how do we take the lessons of nature? Now you have all these people that have not disconnected themselves with the earth, that in the Amazon or Africa, or even in a city, there are people um, that are hidden, that, that are invisible. Communities of resistance of this environmental movement and social justice movement that's been around for a long time. So it didn't just pop out of nowhere. Extinction Rebellion absolutely sits on the shoulders of other movements, of other elders, including quite young people who I consider elders. How do we weave our stories without losing the preciousness of our individual stories? How do we weave these stories together into movements? A battle for people's minds. The dominant narrative is still what dominates in the media, in academia, and even on the web. We make sense of the world through the stories we tell ourselves. We make sense of our own lives through those stories. We can't give up on stories. It's how we communicate. And we can't give up on stories because we are making a story all the time and we are creating our own stories. When we intervene at a cultural level, we shift the values implicit in those stories. The narrative that I feel coming forwards at the minute is that we've had enough. It's time to repair the damage that we've done. And the old containers or by which we framed hope and change and the promise of being human, they are following us. The landscape is electrified. We are seeing how the capitalist system co-opts all forms of dissent. Traditional forms of politics and activism are increasingly ineffective. A new form of activism is emerging that shifts the very cultures at the heart of our global operating system. We are strengthening our ability to hack the dominant global narrative that is destroying the foundations of life itself. Life itself. The great fires of the Amazon and China and the Congo and the Arctic and Greenland and Alaska and Northern Canada are going to be devastating. We will see the loss of a lot of communities. The weather is going to be more violent. The loss of lives are going to be heavy. There'll be collapse of governments all over the place. Are you ready? You have to be ready mentally, physically, emotionally for what is coming. I got a very clear message that we cannot fight darkness with darkness. Before the emergence of what, it, what comes next, that is the time of the monsters. Growing frustrations and tensions and despair of ordinary people. In a narrative of division, separation and divisiveness. The feeling of guilt of our own culture. We are unable to listen to the wisdom that is out there. The Midakoya Oyasi, the more we, we understand the movements of the earth, that's the spiritual technology that I think we're missing. The earth is our teacher, our leader, our government, our economy. Let's remember that we start there. It's an embodied understanding to the living systems of the earth. Prayer, ceremony, culture, language, dance, song and art and at a spiritual activism and we have to find ways to listen to that for us to all 
begin to discover who we could be. Then I think those visions have to come equally from young people as they have to come from the elders. Being held by something bigger than yourself through the difficult times, because to me quite a lot of this feels like walking through a fire together. Through this practice, there's a lot of self-criticism, ego checking. Kind of evolutionary model of Western democracy, but these, are, these models and predictive devices are simply wrong. And that we're in for quite a surprising time. We're basically all going to either be climate refugees or we're going to be taking climate refugees into our communities. And we need to learn how to do that well. That by 2030, many of us will not be around. So this historical time available, how do we use it in a beautiful way, is the challenge. Where do I put my hopes? In the action of the everyday, in the action of life, in the action of doing. This is uh, the, the hope today. Thousands and millions uh, of people are now mobilized and ready to do something now. Because when you have people who are hungry, who are homeless, they will rise up. And I do see as indigenous movements are spreading from the tip of Argentina to the tip of Canada, to the tip of Africa, to the tip of Siberia, I see this happening. Come back, and the rivers come back, and the laughter come back, and the medicines come back, and the stories come back, and the power come back, and the oceans come back, and the prayers come back, and the coral come back, and the soil come back.